Um, they were traveling on their spaceship, the LMS Explorer, in the outer rim of the galaxy when the ship got pulled into a wormhole and they were sent to a distant galaxy. They are stuck on the planet U. But luckily, this planet is rich in, you you named it, Briconium energy crystals and Lego ore. So, so they send out their rock raiders to, well, rock raid and collect as many resources as possible to help rebuild their ship. However, during their journey, they encounter many aliens and hardships. Dot, dot, dot. West, are you ready for rock raiders? I'm ready. Hello, bricks, chicks, and minifigures. You are listening to A Falls Welcome, where we talk about all things Lego from the perspective of two adult collectors. We are your co host. I'm Grinch. And I'm West. And today we will be talking about Lego Rock Raiders, a blast from the past. But before we take a trip down memory lane, let's go ahead and talk about some exciting Lego news. Exciting Lego news. So not a super active news week this week, but a lot of very impactful news nonetheless. First up, we have the Jabba Sail Barge officially revealed and Luke's lightsaber gift with purchase. We have information about the drop ship, another 25th anniversary Star Wars set. More clarity on the multi-year Formula One partnership with Lego. And then uh, lastly, a little bit of drama happened here with uh, Lego and instructions that uh, maybe created a little bit more discourse this week than the uh, the Lego group was intending. So, uh, West, uh, give, give it to me here. Which one of these did you want to talk about first? Yeah, I think the first thing that I just wanted to bring up is, um, you know, exciting news on the, the Java sail barge. I think the set looks really cool. The... Um, way that they captured the angles of the deck as it curves, I think just looks really, really sharp. And mm-hmm. I think it was on Tiagio's review of it where he felt like the studs on the side kind of took away from some of the model. But I, I just think it looks really, really great. It's, hmm. you know, it's one of those things where we kind of laugh about like sets being desk pieces. I, I think this one would look really great on display. And I read it's very clean. Yes. Yes. And I really like the siding. It looks, it it looks like a, like an ironclad ship almost. It just, they really capture that. Well, I read a really interesting kind of take on it from tips and bricks. And they mentioned that it was basically to scale, um, to minifigure scale. So I thought that was exciting to see too. And so it, it just looks very proportional. Hmm. It, it looks great. So exciting to see official images what do you, of that set. What do you feel about kind of the, the backlash of the set? Because there's there's not been some positive conversations happening about it. Yeah, you know, I think I, I think it's understandable that the, it feels expensive. I think Legos, mm-hmm. I think very quickly approaching a point where their 18 plus line uh, is going to need to slim down a little bit. You know, we get a lot of expensive mm-hmm. sets every year. We're still expecting uh, the X-Men mansion and the botanical gardens idea set this year Yep. Uh, to name some other ones. We, that doesn't include the modular, the next winter village set. So like there's a lot of stuff still coming this year. That's going to be pricey. And I right. think in the larger Lego community, especially the adult collectors, while you do see adult collectors who like to specialize in a theme, a lot of them Mm -hmm. just collect everything. And I think I, I, I'm sure, you know, we've talked about this in our own collection fatigue episodes, but that pressure to, to have to get everything I think is very real. And so I, I think this is a good example of like like a really great set. It's just it's it's expensive, and yeah, if you're gonna spend five hundred dollars on Lego, is this how you want to spend it? I don't know. I that yeah, that's kind of like why I don't collect Star Wars too. Is just because I feel like you could collect five themes, or you could collect Star Wars, and I'd prefer the five themes. But I did want to point out too, 
you know, we knew we were getting this. Mm -hmm. And if I told you it was going to have a price to a, a price to part ratio of 12 cents per part, would that would have been a pretty easy pill for you to swallow, right? You know, before you saw the set, <laughs> before you got official piece counts, right? Many figures, you know, if I said, hey, we're going to get a UCS job of sales bar for 12 parts, you know, 12 cents per part, you'd be like, well, what would you be like? I, I think I'd be fine with that, you know, and I think yeah, you'd be like, that's reasonable. <laughs> right. So what's changed? <laughs> I do think too, like first time we got Jabba since like what, 2012, like mm -hmm. in over a decade, uh, the best version of Jabba we've gotten so far, Max Rebo, Salacious B. Crumb. Uh, I'm forgetting the guy, the, the Twilight male guy, whatever his name is. Um, Hut Slayer Leia, right? Uh, some very unique aliens with Gamorrean guards. Like mm -hmm. these are all very unique minifigures, and they certainly are going to add to the price too. So for me, when I, like when you look at this on paper, like from a Lego kind of budget perspective, you're like, okay, we've got what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven minifigures. Cool. We've got five hyper unique minifigures at that with specialized molds that are kind of outside of Lego. That new Le Leia hair piece is awesome. Mm -hmm. We've got a big fig in Jabba. We've got a printed placard. All of a sudden you're like, yep, no, 12, 12, 12 cents per piece sounds pretty good. I, I think it's more along the lines of what you were mentioning of just, you know, fatigue of, okay, I got to go spend $500 on, oh, this is kind of small, isn't it? I was expecting something bigger, you know? You know, the other thing too is it has a very detailed interior in a way that I think mm -hmm. if you were to say 500 pieces, like, or, or sorry, the, you know, 12 cents price per part ratio, like it doesn't quite capture that on the exterior. I think you could have maybe made it a little bigger, mm -hmm. but the trade off is we get this just incredibly detailed and great looking interior. And I, I, yeah. I think that's a trade-off I'd be willing to make. Like, I think, I think it looks fantastic. It, it's almost like a modular building inside of this thing in terms of like interior detail with the kitchen and like the stairway and stuff. Like there was just a lot of attention paid to that. And I think that's wonderful. I think that's really cool to see. So I think too, one thing we wanted to talk about was our our direction on this podcast to move away from covering leaks in our news. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, we know there's images of the uh, Winter Village set this year floating around out there. Go check them out yourself if you'd like, but we, we won't discuss them here until it's officially revealed. Um, and I think this is kind of a good tie into that because I remember seeing leaks or rumors that this thing was going to be to scale with the new Sarlacc pit. Mm. And that set didn't have a good price to part ratio. And I, I just remember like, people taking a big, big huff of copium being like, but no, 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 it's going to be to scale with the Java sail barge. Maybe, you know, they spent so much time on the sand around the Sarlacc pit so that it looks better next to the Java sails barge. And now people are looking at it and be like, these aren't to the scale. <laughs> so I, you know, I think it's, it's our, you know, responsibility as we've grown a following now and, and people care about what we say and we want people to care about what we say but we also you know know that you know to quote spider-man here with great power comes great responsibility and and it is not our intention to ever necessarily you know set expectations in a wrong way so for that reason you know just like we do a ton of research for this podcast we want to make sure that you know the information that we're presenting is you know as factual as it can possibly be uh, to our knowledge at the time. So for that reason, it's, it's kind of difficult to cover leaks. Yeah. I would just say for anybody who's listening, if, if your expectation is this is a podcast that's going to cover leaks, um, you know, we appreciate you listening, but, but that's not really the focus for us. So, um, you know, like Grant Grinch said, you can find leaks. Who's Grant? Elsewhere. And, uh, <laughs> You, you you know there's there's lots of uh, there's a leak right there for you <laughs> <laughs> covered covered today um no but you know there's there's a lot of stuff going on and um i think it's just important that we keep our expectations where mm -hmm. they are and, and truthfully too like when lego does reveal these for real right with crisper images 
and videos and then we get the whole YouTube army, you know, covering it. It's, I think that's the better, I, I prefer that over a grainy image of a, I mean, it, it definitely increases like hype and that's exciting, but like beyond that, you know, take it or leave it. I, I just remember back in the day when like you had to use, I can't believe I'm saying that, but like, you know, you had to use the Lego magazine and that's like how you got your Lego news. And you're like, oh my gosh, you know, the new issue came out. Yeah. And I was so excited to get the new like quarterly Lego magazine to see what new sets were being released. Dude, I still get the magazine sometimes and I just, I'm like, yeah, I already know this. And I just kind of like, I guess I should not sign up for this because I'm well aware of all these sets Lego. <laughs> but I, I also think there's always been this sub leaking culture with Lego because they've kind of done a terrible job at announcing sets too. Like it, it felt like sets just kind of popped up over time. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, you know, I, when I, when I came out of my dark age, I was always like, I got to follow these leak websites. Otherwise I don't get an official announcement from Lego because I want to know what's coming out. I don't want to know, when it's out right you know i don't want to be like oh i gotta go buy this right now i want to be able to prepare for some of this stuff and, and get a little bit excited so i think it's an easy rabbit hole to fall down and like a very understandable one to fall down because it is you know it's exciting like we all love lego um but i think that's enough about java sail barge and the leaks quickly wes what did you think about the luke's light spader the light spader is that like a potato cutter <laughs> yeah, I, I think it looks fine. I think they're cool. Yeah, I, I think this is a really solid example of where because mm -hmm. I know they've done Yoda's lightsaber, I believe. And they've done Yeah, and Anakin's right? I think so. I I think this these just need. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Luke's Luke's blue lightsaber, mm -hmm. Anakin's lightsaber. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah, they just need to make these into sets. This is just yeah. like Lego's leaving money on the table here of in the 18 plus line. And this is, you know, I think I talked about this last episode of smaller 18 plus sets. Here's a great mm -hmm. example of like a $40 set that Lego right. could be releasing for $50. $40 set. Well, you know, I <laughs> 20, it's, it's 140 pieces. Okay. Well, there you go. $20. I'm sure people would pay $40 wow. for them. All I'm hearing is, guys, you heard it here first, leak alert. Uh, West is the reason we have to pay outlandish prices for some of these Lego sets. <laughs> Don't give Lego any ideas, huh? Yeah. No, I think somebody's taking notes at the Lego group right now. Oh, wow, we can do $40 of a lightsaber. There's like 100 lightsabers out there. Just wait till you see Mace Windu's with that drum lacquered gold. That'll be $60. Yeah, right. I. I just think that there's a missed opportunity here to, to make a little bit more um, money, to be frank, but yeah. for Lego. I, I wonder if they've done, you know, the nerd in me, the analytical nerd in me is asking if they've kind of looked into that to be like, is it better for us to sell 10% more job of sale barges up front so that we can recruit some of the, the R and D funds, or is it better to, to kind of sell a smaller, Luke's lightsaber, I don't know. Maybe they're sitting on the lightsabers for when Star Wars is even more dry than it currently is. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, Star Wars as an evergreen theme is kind of, and we see this with Harry Potter too, where they're sort of re replaying the old classics. Rehashing. You know, mm -hmm. so. So speaking of old classics, yeah. uh, Wes, what did you think about the 25th anniversary dropship? I think, did we finally get, I mean, this was leaked months ago, right? Did we finally get the official reveal? I think so. I think we got pictures from Alan Tran um, online. Uh, it, mm -hmm. I think it looks really fun. I, these are great sets. You know, we've talked about it already to some extent. I, I think it's really fun to see these non-canonical sets continue and they're almost canon now right because this is their third iteration of like this very unofficial set but i do wish we had a drop trooper or a dark trooper in here in black mm -hmm. i think that's the one missed opportunity although the stormtroopers haven't changed so you could switch them out very easily true so true i, I really like the you know for the 20th anniversary we've got the drop ship but we didn't get the rebels. I think this is a, 
but we didn't get the rebels and i think the drop ship is supposed to be a newer take on it whereas the other drop ship was more of just a modernized version of it this drop ship feels very different mm -hmm. which i kind of appreciate uh, and i really like the rebel scout speeder i think it's just it's phenomenal to be honest and also you know uh six troopers 40 bucks feels like a little bit you know a lot when you think about those other ones that these are this is replicating or honoring those were what 10 bucks a pop for for four stormtroopers and yeah. four rebel troopers are 15 dollars a pop so again prices do change uh, but it, it looks really good and then you do get the special limited edition qt kt droid which i believe was a fan design of somebody somebody had shared some information with me about that because i was kind of like what is this and it was like somebody's dream to design a lego star wars droid i believe they had like terminal cancer or something like that it was like a kid and they designed this qt kt uh as themselves so that they could be in star wars so like not trying to make anybody cry here but nice story you should look it up um west any additional takes on the formula one partnership i think as far as news goes we had talked about this a little bit but uh this now says it's a multi-year partnership launching in 2025 yeah i would say that's the only to feature big news. all teams on their current grid yeah is that we we know that there's it's multiple years so this might not be right. the deluge of formula one that we expected into the lego with this crossover but we we are certainly going to get you know a few things so um I, you know i think going back to the comments we made about the leaks too right like we got the that insight on the cmf series it could look totally mm -hmm. different than what we're right. expecting so i think this that's another good example of like let's just wait and see you know like yeah I, i'm curious to see what formula one brings to the table this year you know i i did i will say i've always been surprised with this this specific crossover because we've seen a lot of formula one branding with lego already so right especially this year too right they really mm -hmm. kind of dove in i mean with the safety car and speed champions the two different speed champions lines there's some technic lines that are are getting into formula one like I, i'm curious to see mm -hmm. what more we get and i'm excited because i think that could be really interesting so there's there's two things that I found interesting about the press release. First of all, you know it says it's going to include the ten, 10 teams, and it says the current teams are McLaren and then Red Bull Racing. So I think it'd be really cool to get some like official Lego Red Bull prints in some form or fashion. You know, maybe pick up a couple of these sticker sheets, and you can have custom Red Bull cans in your Lego city. Is there going to be enough to maybe make a Red Bull truck? You know, Red Bull is just so anonymous, uh, synonymous, sorry, with, um, you know, high action adrenaline sports, right? So I, it'd be kind of interesting to, to have a you know little sub Red Bull theme running around too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing was we talked like, where are they going to integrate Formula One, right? And we kind of joked like maybe friends. Um, but what I found interesting is that in this press release, it says the Lego Formula One products will include sets from Lego Duplo, as well as sets for kids, teenagers, and adult builders. So we could for get me, Lego. if they're we going as get... far down as Duplo, I don't, uh, Friends is not that far off <laughs> as far as, as, you know, kids, teenagers, and adults, like that's Friends. So <laughs> I, I think that would just be really funny. I i think that would be yeah i would i would laugh a little bit i don't think i would necessarily uh, try it but I, you know i get a good job maya's formula one friends and it's just like them all in a hot tub on a cruise <laughs> <laughs> lando norris and maya you know <laughs> and maya's big race. go shopping <laughs> in the big race for the pony award <laughs> yeah <laughs> so last piece of news here and i want to make sure we cover it uh because it's been kind of i don't i don't even want to say polarizing because that involves that there's two extreme sides right this has just been pure backlash so west i know beforehand i i was like hey are we going to talk about the instructions you're like the what and i'm like what do you mean the what so i want to get you know your raw reaction here as somebody who's been maybe a little bit further away from this than i have because mm -hmm. i voted on the survey 
um, like during work hours, I got some notification and I was like, wait, I gotta go, I gotta go vote on this. This is, this is pivotal. Um, so a couple days ago, Lego put out a survey regarding the future of instructions and asking people how they wanted, you know, if they were okay with only digital instructions and like, it just blew up. It got pretty much almost immediately taken down. And now Lego has officially already responded to the survey as well. So what do you feel about Lego, you know, going away from service? I will say really quick too, as I'm thinking about it, the survey yeah. felt a little biased because it was like, I'm trying to remember the questions off the top of my head, but it was like, how likely would you be to recommend Lego sets to somebody um, that did have instructions? And it was like, the way the answers were, was like, you couldn't answer no. <laughs> And so I think that also pissed off a lot of people because they're like, well, I have to take the survey and it's kind of set up to make it succeed. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I was kind of surprised they took it down and I was kind of surprised, like, cause of, you know, the backlash was all on, you know, online discourse. So Wes, what do you, what do you think? Well, I, I, you know, I don't have a ton of opinions on, on the survey itself or anything cause I didn't see it, but I, I will say I, I dabbled with the digital instructions and they're they're okay mm -hmm. it's not necessarily that they're clunky i think that they just it's like everything is one step by step and the sub assemblies and right. it, it just as you go through it i think i think for lego's purposes right what would be better would just be a PDF of the regular Lego instructions. The digital instruction mm, I don't even like that. That just shows the builds as they go and stuff, and you can like mm -hmm. do augmented reality. It just doesn't work well enough. And I think they would have to invest more than what they want to in each instruction booklet that they would have to create in terms of animation right. and stuff to make that. I mean, sure, you invest in it once and you're done. But it's kind of the same thing with like the PDF. Like I, I, I think of like I said, I think a PDF would be fine to scroll through or you know to have up on your laptop in front of you as you're building, versus uh, the the way that the current digital instructions kind of walk you through mm -hmm. the builds. It just it's too, it, like I said, it's too clunky. It takes too much time, and it, it, I kind of find myself getting a little frustrated with that process over. Um, the actual build itself. So there's quite a few reasons I am strongly against this. And I'll, I'll end with my most, you know, my strongest case or what I think is my strongest case. First of all, I talked about it in the display, curating your collection, you know, those episodes. For me personally, I don't collect boxes, but I do collect instructions as kind of my proof of purchase, right? I mean, that's the reason you hold onto a box is so if you go to resell it in the future, it's like, I've got the box. This is a real Lego set. It wasn't pieced together on BrickLink. It wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. just random pieces that were thrown together with custom, like, here's my proof. For me, that like instructions are suffice for that reason when I buy a used set. I only buy it with the instructions on a very rare occasion. I will not, you know, mm -hmm. perhaps instructions are readily available. So that's one reason. Um, the second reason, and I think, I mean, there's a couple other reasons too, but for me, I work on my computer all day. We do this podcast in our spare time, right? At night, I watch TV with my wife. I play Counter-Strike. I play video games. I need something where I can completely unplug from notifications, social media, and devices. And for me, that is building Lego. Mm -hmm. And when I build with my wife, she likes to have something on TV. I don't. I don't. I want to be able to sit down and enjoy the Lego set. And if I have, my, have to have my iPad there or my computer there, so I have to flip through digital instructions while I'm getting pinged on the side because, you know, you won't believe what just happened over in Asia or the Middle East, you know, CNN alert or, you know, somebody just commented something on Instagram or, you know, Facebook unveils, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I want to be able to completely, you know, unconnect from the digital world. And outside of going outside and doing sports, which in my older age is not as much fun as it used to be, 
Lego's that for me. So um, I just, I want it to stay a non-digital medium. I think that is actually most the one of the most compelling arguments for that of all Grinch is, is that cord cutting aspect of, Mm -hmm. of of the instruction booklet you know they made them simpler a few years ago and there was some backlash over that i thought that was kind of immature like the agreement here oh you mean like the the graphic design Mm -hmm. on the front yeah you know i I take it i I understand that like people enjoy it from like an art perspective but like the relationship and the agreement with lego is like we're shipping you the pieces and the instructions to build it right you know the pieces are good quality because that's what you're getting at the end of the day, the instructions need to be good enough quality. But for a lot of people who buy stuff, they just throw out the instructions. So like, you know, we can make this on more recycled material, we can use this with less expensive ink, you know, the the graphic design that goes into it can just be a very simple picture of the set on the front, it doesn't need to be this curated booklet every single time. They could also make the steps somewhat more complicated. I mean, they're advertising as 18 plus. Yeah. I don't need to start by putting a one by two on top of a one by four and then attaching that one by four to a one by six over three instruction steps. Make that all one. Mm -hmm. Like we can deduce that. And, And I think they do that, right? As you go up in complexity, you know, we always joke. Sometimes. I I feel like it's a little inconsistent. Yeah, you're probably fair. And I think they could probably take everything up a level and be okay. I think that's very doable. But like I'm building bar door right now. And like this last bag, there was one step that was like literally attaching one piece. And the next step was attaching like 20. And I'm like, like, I could have just done all of this at once. Yeah. So, (laughs) so Grinch, um, any any other thoughts for for ideas or uh, sorry not ideas but um, news this week in terms of stuff that you saw? I think you know we are excited for the official reveal of the Lego Winter Village set, and once it is officially revealed, you guys will hear about it first on this podcast. That's a theme that both Grinch and I are huge fans of. But mm-hmm. any last last thoughts? That's all I had. So let's go ahead and move over to the main topic. Today's topic. So the main topic today is Rock Raiders. And as I said, it's a little bit of a blast from the past here. Um, I'm going to set the stage for us, West. all right? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just kind of spit some lore here and, and this slaps. So, you know, my Gen Zers out there, you're welcome using your lingo. Um, they were traveling on their spaceship, the LMS Explorer, in the outer rim of the galaxy when the ship got pulled into a wormhole and they were sent to a distant galaxy. They are stuck on the planet U. But luckily, this planet is rich in, you you named it, Braconium Energy Crystals and Lego Ore. So, lucky. so they send out their rock raiders to, well, rock raid, and collect as many resources as possible to help rebuild their ship. However, during their journey, they encounter many aliens and hardships. Dot, dot, dot. West, are you ready for Rock Raiders? I'm ready. So what do you think about when you think about this theme? Well, this was a theme that was introduced in the late 90s when you and I were kind of just really getting into Lego. So we, we actually collected a few of these ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's definitely a large sense of nostalgia when it comes to this theme. Uh, other than that, when I hear the description, I immediately think this is not what I got. (laughs) (laughs) What, what do you mean? (laughs) Yeah, so famously, Grinch, as you're kind of alluding to, right, and, and I know we're going to get to, is that this theme right, was paired with not only a video game, but like a comic series. Mm-hmm. And Three so books. There's this whole back lore about, yeah. you know, what's going on here. And I think, you know, when you look at like what you have in front of you, it's that's not clear at all. <laughs> yeah, but I think, 
I, I think too, what's really important about this theme is, you know, we've kind of talked about it before you and I have, especially offline where it's like some themes need to crawl so others can run. Right. And when we did a practice episode, we talked about throwbots or we talked about that in Bionicle, but I feel like this was a, like a big turning point for Lego and their own IP Yeah, because the, the self created lego themes the original lego themes that come after this kind of follow this template right they're story driven Mm -hmm. and i think we kind of have already captured an issue with having them be story story driven because like as a six-year-old playing this you're not like i gotta go read this book you're like i want to go play lego and i don't really care so like does the narrative add that much? But like Ninjago now has a TV show, right? Even Jurassic Park Lego sets, right? Um, obviously, some of them are off of Camp Cretaceous, but like Lego made their own Jurassic Park TV show in 2019. Okay. Legends of Isla Nubar when they came out with those sets. So like now Lego t- takes this approach with everything, right? Yeah, that's a great point. It's It's definitely where you see the brand and the company really start to develop more context and more backstory um, around these figures. And like you said, it, it definitely in a way of like rock Raiders crawled. So Ninjago could sprint, right? I mean, mm-hmm. they had a movie like a, it released in theaters. Right. So I, I think one of the, if we look at this in a vacuum, the big miss here is that there's so much in the backstory. It's intricate. It's intricate and none of it is communicated if you just look at the sets. Right, right. And I think they came with a little small comic in the instructions, if I recall. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, like Lego City did a... a, um, a wave a few years ago where they had you know named characters for all the city people Mm -hmm. and you saw that on the box but unless you went to that other you know the other source of that information you didn't really get it from the set right and they're trying to tie that stuff together and that makes sense from a branding perspective it's just i don't think it has the cultural cachet that they're expecting or sort of planning it to have Mm -hmm. and so when it comes to actually like execution you're sort of, I mean, again, you know, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but like, I'm a rather, you know, contextually intelligent individual. Like I can sit there and look at what's going on. And Sometimes. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Depends if I'm right or if you're right. I see, I see. <laughs> but you know, you're like, okay, cool. Like this figure's name is Poppy and the, you know, other figure's name is Murph. And you know, you're like, okay, like clearly they're characters or like when it comes to the rock Raiders, like, you know, I, it's funny because when we started looking into this theme as adults, that's when I learned Mm -hmm. about the backstory. I never knew about that as a kid, but like, I understood what I was looking at. And so in in some respects, Lego knocked it out of the park in that they, they created this really, you didn't need a theme. Right. Right. But at the end, on the other side of the coin, they spent all this money on producing this context and backstory for it to be completely lost on me as the final consumer. Right. And so it's just interesting to see, I think as an adult and kind of looking back on it, little connections to the larger storyline would have made more sense, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a printed piece with the name of the ship, Mm -hmm. right? Mm Mm-hmm. Or like a briefing room or something with a mini figure right. who's not dressed in the Rock Raider attire, but like a, you know, like a ship captain attire or something. Or, um, yeah, just like LMS Explorer, like written on the sides of the the equipment, right? right? Like tying that to the ship would have made more sense. So for a kid who's excited about, you know, especially me, I was, I have ADHD. So a little ADHD kid who's excited about going home and building Lego set. You're not sitting there like looking at the box and reading the first two pages of the instructions. You're just pulling this thing out to build it. Right. <laughs> um, I, I would be remiss if I did not mention the video game because I played it. West, you, you did not. Right. I don't, th- I don't remember. So, I mean, if I did, okay. it's, 
been a while. So, so let me tell you about it. Yeah, it was a base building game. So your whole point was to like land on this terrain, and then you went and you mined, and then you built up your base over time, and then the little rock monsters came and attacked you, mm-hmm. and also other monsters. And we'll we'll get into those other monsters, but famously they had like the slugger snake, which I know is like now like. I'm sorry, Slugger Slug, as I call it a snake, which is now like, I mean, it, it, it transcends this Lego theme. I mean, I, like people love Slugger. And they had all sorts of, I mean, we'll talk about all the different monsters they had, but, you know, we essentially had what was the first big fig um, as well within this theme. But going back to the video game, yeah, the video game was... I, I tried to download it to play it again recently and I couldn't because the like the emulator was broken but um, I, I just I just remember there was just an impossible level in it and it's a very simple Lego game but all I remember is just like the sound of the chisels as people were rock raiding and digging so um, it was it was not the best executed video game but it has a special place in my heart uh, because I did play it and it was different but I'm sure if I it's probably a blessing that I can't go back and play it because I'd be like, I spent I, I spent my time playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me set up the, the overview here and then we'll we'll dive into some of the characters. So there's 15 total sets. Uh, eight of them were in the main sets. This was introduced in 1999 and and discontinued very very shortly thereafter in the year 2000. Mm-hmm. It did, however you know, spawn another Lego theme and Power Miners years later. So this is something they've revisited since then, uh, because I do believe it's kind of, it's pretty beloved by us 90s kids. So Wes, you remember the monster, right? The the rock monster. Yep. That was the first big figure. And there's was, there was a ton of other monsters, right? But those were all in the IP. So there were things, or sorry, in the expanded universe. So there's things like the ice monster, lava monster, slimy slug, spider, scorpions, but, uh, and even a rock whale. (laughs) And those only were in the books and the video games. Mm -hmm. So they never actually even made it to Lego sets outside of the rock monster. And that slimy slug I, I mentioned actually ends up making an appearance in Lego Island 2 later on. So something that they kind of recycled and, and reference in the future. Weren't the rock um, monsters but, in Lego Island as well? Uh, I don't... I feel like they were included in... Well, Lego Island. Island was before Rock Raider, so it would have been Lego Island 2, and I didn't really play Lego Island 2. Yeah. There was definitely... I felt like they were in, like, maybe it was the racing video game or something, or... Um, I think they were featured kind of around that era so but I, I feel like we were robbed from so much more right because they they spent all this time setting up the lore and it, it just feels kind of bad that this flopped right yeah i mean it definitely feels like there was more here and i i think you know when we look at it right they i think in the uh stories they talk about like an ice monster and a lava monster and like all these other Mm -hmm. different versions of the rock monster and we just never got to see that in practice which i think was a shame which i think kind of came to fruition in power miners so but famously you know we talk about 1999 like shortly thereafter lego almost went bankrupt right in 2000 2001 so um It's interesting to see a company kind of double down on their technique after going through some adversity like that, right? Because they really kind of, it feels like, took this almost as a template with named characters and stuff, you know, the background, the lore, the video game, and used it in the future as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, this this series, too, had a lot of specialized pieces, right? So there was Mm -hmm. a lot of new... It did. uh, There was new colors, right? Famously, this... This series introduced the color teal. There's a lot of prints. This one had magnets. The minifigures were all different. Lots of big pieces, lots of chrome pieces. So I think Lego probably invested quite a bit in this theme Mm -hmm. before, in terms of production capacity. Um, And and I, I mean, you know, history tells itself, but it looks like it just it ended up having to be on the cutting block. So I, 
like you said, this was right around when Lego was really struggling. So I'm wondering if this was just a case of it just didn't sell as well as it needed to. And they were like, well, we put a lot of money in this, but we just need to cut our losses here and move on. You know what I mean? Right. So, West, you talked about the named characters, right? I think this was one of the first, if not the first, Lego themes that included, you know, original named characters. So we had Axel, Bandit, Chief, Docs with an S, Jet, Sparks, and then, of course, the Rock Monster. Yeah, and this one's a weird one, too, because if you got the set 4930 the rock raiders crew you pretty much got every single minifigure mm-hmm. but then every single other one always showed up for six dollars by the way <laughs> you got five minifigures for six dollars and it was pretty much the whole crew except for you said they pretty much showed up in all sets except for the infamous chief right he was the only and one you remember mm-hmm that you had to get in in like a basically a poly bag. Yeah, they were the they were the kind of pre battle packs or minifigure packs. A lot of them came with three minifigures. They did it for this Star Wars Lego Ninja, uh, and I think that was it. Right, it was Star Wars Lego Ninja and Rock Raiders. I might be missing one more theme there, but they had three of them in total. Retailed for two ninety nine, and I believe the three packs retailed for a little bit more than that. I don't have the price in front of me though. So you got what looks like Sparks, Jet, and Docs, and then you got uh, the other three in the next pack, and then in the third pack it was only Chief. And Wes, do you know how much Chief goes for nowadays? If you had bought him in the year two thousand, you could have bought him for three dollars. Uh, how much Grinch? Five hundred dollars. That is insane. Which makes him the most expensive new set on this list of all the Rock Raider <laughs> sets. Even more expensive than the largest set in the series. Eight pieces. And I think there's one minifigure. Eight pieces. One minifigure. Five hundred. <laughs> and a dream. <laughs> And no, he's not a Comic Con exclusive, but he might as well be, I guess, because I, you know, at the time he was only available. Like you could only buy those minifigure packs at Lego retail stores, mm-hmm. which were few and far between where they are now. I mean, now they've got hundreds of Lego retail stores around the world. You know, in any major city, they're going to have one, if not two, Lego stores. But back then, it was like, I mean, I th- there was a handful of Lego stores. And it also was discontinued very quickly after it was released. So not only was it kind of very retail exclusive, but it also didn't live on the shelf very long. And then it was a sought after minifigure because he had a turquoise arm and turquoise was introduced here. And it was also discontinued, I think in like 2005 ish. And so for 18 years, this was the only turquoise arm that you could get on the market. (laughs) It's, it's history like that that I think is just fascinating with Lego of, of how they have these limited runs of stuff that, you know, for some reason, it's, it's the only time or place that that was ever introduced. And then that's it. And, and it you know, you look at like, why is it so expensive? And the simple answer is just because we haven't made it anymore. <laughs> I just think that's really funny. I, I, there's great and when we did, it flopped and nobody bought it. Right, right. But now it's you know this this incredibly sought after or you know expensive thing because it was released in such limited quantities. I think we you know we there's really great examples of this Grinch. You have a few Pirates of the Caribbean pieces. I recall it was like the pen, pen quill feathers that are like extremely mm. rare because that's the only set that they were ever released in that color. And I just, it's so hilarious to see, you know, such a very simple and, you know, you would never think that that piece could get expensive and then, you know, come to find out it's, it's orders of magnitude more expensive than its counterparts. Yeah. So what you're, what you're referring to is uh, there's a feather 
quill piece in t- in tan, mm-hmm. dark tan, which is which is not a uncommon color. Right. But the dark tan is only available on the minifigure Angela from Pirates of the Caribbean or Radagast the Brown. And <laughs> average price right now on Bricklink is guess how much for sale? I, I would. I mean. I, it's obviously nothing like insane, right? But I would think like ten or fifteen. It depends more. on your definition of insanity. Okay, then then it is insane. Currently for sale, and and average sales in the last six months. I'll start with the average sales of the last six months. It's fifty two dollars. <laughs> New, you, you know how much used is fifty two dollars, fifty three dollars <laughs> actually. Currently for sale, on the market. New. $80 average, you use $70 average. That's so insane. if you are ever buying a Radagast the Brown minifigure, and if you're ever buying a Angela minifigure from Pirates of the Caribbean, you have to make sure 100% that it comes with that plume. I would message the seller and say, this comes with the plume, right? <laughs> and if they say no, just know you're going to have to spend more on that minifigure to go get the plume by itself. Yeah. And I think this was before they included it in like a duplicate, because nowadays you would have got two of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think they did this back then. I'm I'm not sure because you would think, you know, okay, well if everybody who got one has two, it wouldn't be the case, but well, it's not potentially. But even though even with that, like it's still a, such a limited run, you know, the the, mm-hmm. the numbers would be so small. Um, I, I know we're, you know, obviously way off onto a tangent. I'm going to bring it to a close here real quick. How much does that minifigure cost? And does the cost of the plume inflate the cost of the minifigure? Yes. And which is why sometimes you'll find, well, Radagast is kind of its own unique. We're going to go a little further down this rabbit hole (laughs) since you asked. Radagast is its own unique kind of, um, cesspool of issues with minifigure productions from 2013. First of all, we talked about the plume, right? Mm -hmm. So a Radagast minifigure who is a beloved character from the book, but not really cared about too much from the movie. You would not expect him to be like one of the most expensive Hobbit minifigures. Currently for sale, he's $125. Okay. And used, he's $115. (laughs) So like very close. And that just tells you he's sought after one of the reasons the plume right so if you ever find one that's for sale for like 40 dollars, he probably doesn't have the plume like i can i will buy it for you if he has the plume just kidding that's not a promise but that's how confident i am the other issue with radagast is he is a brown colored minifigure torso and brown from you know 2008 to 2015 is incredibly brittle. Yeah. So I actually have bought multiple torsos for him because I found some for a good price. And unfortunately, if you sometimes when you move his arms, they just break off. Or the torso breaks. Like literally, if his arm feels stiff at all, you do not move it. Yeah. Because as soon as you try to move it, it will it literally just snap off. You know, it's it funny so brittle. that you mentioned him as a character of just not being i i remember watching that movie and just not enjoying him as a character at all so i totally get what you're saying of like there's a lot of weird nuances with this minifigure because he Mm -hmm. is i I think as a character in the story he's fine it's just the depiction of like the birds flying around and living in him like his hair and like and stuff you're just like ew this is (laughs) there's nothing endearing about this character at all you know like it's just strange. So I, I hear you. And I, I think that that's, um, but funny that, that it has now become the sought after minifigure for a lot of many reasons, right? One, which is that they're literally breaking. And so it makes it probably <laughs> as valuable if you have a complete one because right. it hasn't broken yet. <laughs> Some kudos. Um, yeah, that's funny. So anyways, going back to rock Raiders, <laughs> bringing us back. Um, Back to our regularly scheduled feature. Yeah, so we have this extremely exclusive minifigure in chief, right? And and he's really expensive. Mm-hmm. But 
you know, from, from really from there, we have the rest of them. They're named, right? I'm sure the comic kind of goes into it. If they weren't named, I don't think you'd lose anything in this series. You know what I mean? I mean, like right. clearly there's enough of a differentiation in the figures and faces and, you know, like there's, I don't remember which one is the, the, the women character, woman character. I think there's only one, uh, which is, you know, maybe a foul in, in 2024, yeah. but, you know, kind of you your token female character. Um, yeah, I mean, they didn't, there wasn't enough that separated them that made them interesting that like, I wanted to revisit it, you know what I mean? Or, or mm-hmm. uh, invent anything more with like the lore. They just kind of looked like angry miners, really. Like, so. So let's talk about some of the sets here. Yeah. So there's not a ton, right? There's there's 15 sets in total. Four of them were like tiny little promo sets that, you know, 20 pieces mm-hmm. here and there for this small little vehicle. And the main bulk of this, you know, the, the wave, the, the retail wave of these sets was was eight sets outside of those minifigure packs. And it just, it, it looking at the sets, it just takes me back. I'm going to name some retail prices here. $3, $4, $6, $15, $20, $20 $20, $20, $20, twice, $30, $50, and $80. The most that was the wave. expensive set in the wave was $80. Um, I'm doing mental math right now. I've got $213 for the entire wave of eight sets. Yeah. This is a really great now, example too of mm-hmm. how sets from the nineties and early two thousands, you know, a lot of people are, are sitting there going like, Oh, the price per piece, you know, was, was way better. Like these ones, I'm looking at some of the price no, per pieces, not. right? 22 cents. 13 cents, 18 cents, 14 Mm -hmm. cents, like there's 20 cents, right? Like there's some like both good price per piece ratios here, but also like not great price per piece ratios at all. Now, granted, there's a lot of big pieces in this, right? And if Jang were here, he'd remind us that, you know, these bigger pieces do cost a little bit more to make. And so they do kind of change the ratios of price per piece. I hope that was a good Jang impression. Um, Spot on. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm like, Jang, tell me, what, what is it like to be the king of YouTube? <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought I was interviewing you right now. Well, you know, the, the algorithm. Is Wes, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, okay. 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 Rock Raiders. Anyways, so there's not, there, there really aren't great price per piece ratios here. What is interesting yeah. is the average price in this wave is a lot lower than I think other waves are. So there, to your point, there are less expensive sets floating around in this wave than in other ways. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's smaller builds, they're, you know, $20 builds, $30 builds, the most expensive being $80, right? There's an $80 set and a $50 set. And those were like the two big sets for the wave. So it, we, right. we, like you mentioned, you're not breaking the bank by collecting this one, but at the same time too, of the eight sets, you know, main sets, the, the average price here has got to be down somewhere in like the thirties for this series, uh, which is really solid. Whereas like, you know, if you were to look at Lego Star Wars today, for example, the average price has right. got to be up somewhere in like the 60s. 60, 70? Yeah. yeah. Just a gut reaction, not not quoting anything. So just to go back to our like number, our first episode we released, right? It's not that Lego is necessarily getting mm-hmm. more expensive. It's that Lego themes are shifting more expensive in the sets that they're releasing. You're not getting the $20 sets right. anymore. You're not getting... The, the eight dollar poly bag. Which, which some would say oh it is getting more expensive but that's why we looked at literally part to price ratio and that's consistent right so it, it, it so it is and it isn't getting more expensive right it's getting more expensive mm-hmm. in that you're getting bigger sets you're not getting small sets anymore but the price hasn't right. really changed in terms of a ratio of what they're producing well said sir well said so talking about some of these sets i mean i, I looking at this on a spreadsheet right mm-hmm. and you know sometimes 
looking at things without the images can help you kind of look at it with a different bias or maybe less bias. You know, it just helps you look and approach the conversation differently. Sure. So I'm looking at this in a spreadsheet and what I'm seeing is it seems like back in the day, Lego had this strategy because, you know, I've seen it with stuff like the Western sets too. And, you know, some of these 90 themes where it's, let's get a couple of really small sets and let's take a loss on those sets, right? If you look at price to part ratios on the small sets, they're very positive. I mean, we're talking about 10 price to part or better or, you know, smaller ratio, right? Yeah. And it's it seemed like the strategy was, let's have a couple of small impulse purchases, get the products in people's hands, make them like the characters so that then they go and get the larger sets. <laughs> Right? I think the official term that's what it feels is, like to me is a loss leader. But what you're telling me right. is, is this is the, um, you know, the the Costco rotisserie chicken of Lego sets, basically. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Hey, let's let's get that yummy chicken in their mouth, and then they'll go buy the mashed potatoes <laughs> and Costco membership afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Didn't know I was going to Costco today, but now I am. Uh, thanks for that, West. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean like. Again, you can buy the entire Rock Raiders crew, all five minifigures, minus Chief, right, for $6. That's insane. You just can't do that today. But let's turn back to some of the sets here. Uh, the Granite Grinder, the Loader Dozer, the Chrome Crusher, <laughs> and then you have the Tunnel Transport, which is kind of a letdown of set names, in my opinion, but, like, love the set names here there's a lot of Which alliteration stands out to you the most there's a lot of alliteration in these names right and and like very like like brawny names right like the loader dozer and the you can kind of like Ew. you can imagine that like movie trailer guy being like in a world <laughs> where the loader is the dozer where the rock raiders are stuck on planet U. Take the tunnel transport. Dwayne Johnson stars as the rock. The Chrome uh, Crusher. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean they're very they're very kind of brawny names, right? The sets themselves yeah. are are very similar. You see a lot of pieces being recycled, actually. So they have this mm -hmm. really you know unique base plate piece that's very large uh, that is makes up both the Chrome Crusher and the Loader Dozer. They all use this. It's not a base plate. It's a, a vehicle frame. Yeah, sorry, vehicle frame. Fair yep. point. Um, but that 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 forms the sort of base of both of those builds. Then you have the tunnel transport, mm -hmm. and that one uses between the three sets. They all use the same cockpit piece, yeah. which is a sort of open boat bucket hull, if you will, and then it's got this brown sort of framed cover on top of it that looks almost like a rock guard or like a rollover cage for those of you who are right. not staring at the image but it's open good thing that planet u has a a stable uh ozone layer and uh oxygen rich environment well and they have their masks right so that's that's kind of the thing i suppose that's this is really just to protect against large boulders uh, falling into their work area, but or um, large rock monsters. And in fact, I, I mentioned the of the the eight sets, the four, you know, the five kind of big sets: the granite grinder, the loader dozer, the chrome crusher, and the tunnel transport. All use that same piece as the cockpit piece for their vehicle. Yeah, and and so of the you know four out of the five sets have that in common. A bunch of them have the big chrome drill piece. Um, they're so, they're all great, like looking sets on their own too, but they're almost so similar. Like you see a lot of through line in the building, the theme, the continuity there. So that makes sense, Yeah. but it almost, I feel like is too, too, too similar. You know what I mean? I, yes and no. I think they, they did a good enough job Yeah. making them feel different enough though so they like what you know if you if this wasn't rock raiders and this was star wars you'd be like ah yes this is the rock faction from tatooine or you know whatever right like but like the one is like a chicken walker right where it's got like little chicken legs that yeah. shuffle the other one is more of your traditional 
uh, front loader, right? Construction equipment. And then the next one, the Chrome Crusher is like this freaking cr crystal crushing battle machine with this giant li light up laser on the top of it. So <laughs> yeah, they feel similar and there's definitely some similarities between the two, but you know, it, they all like, I think they did a really good job making it feel like, you know, in universe, these were all designed by, you know, the same company. Right. And they're just, mm -hmm. this one's more of an all terrain kind of exploratory transport here's the big one that you bring in when you, you know, when you're ready to do some crushing and here's how you get all the crap out. Right. Right. No, that, like, that like, totally makes sense. And I think this is the John Deere or the cat, <laughs> right. Or the Tonka, you know, like it's, it's right. It's the, the trademark yellow, right. Is this trademarked brown cage. No, there's, so there's a lot of continuity there and that's, that's kind of fun to see, you know, a lot of them, a lot of these sets include this laser like pointer, basically. I lack think only words. one, right? What's that? Or is it two? Oh, two sets do it. Yeah. The HQ and the, the Chrome Crusher, mm -hmm. right? They have a, a really great piece in dark blue or dark gray. Um, cause this is all actually prior to dark bluish gray and, and light bluish mm -hmm. gray. Um, or earth gray, as I believe Lego calls it. Um, but they have, Dumb gray, uh, I call it. it this bucket piece, which is really kind of cool. And I, I believe a lot of these pieces actually got reused in construction lines later. So there was definitely a lot of, uh, utility in, in mm -hmm. what they were producing. Um, but things like the cage piece, oh man. Now I got to look this up while we're talking to see if that was ever reused elsewhere. I kind of feel like it was, but, uh, I can look it up. Will you, will you yap? <laughs> um, you know, there, it's just really interesting. What I will say that I think rock Raiders did really well was the play features, right? I mean, if you look mm -hmm. at the rock Raiders HQ set, it really was designed to be played with. Um, in, in that there's a lot of really fun features of like rocks dropping down this, there's like a kind of a, a gantry crane kind of setup um, that's, that has like a bucket on top of it. There's a, a lift crane it, it, in one hand, you know, and all of this is built on this very unique base plate that's raised up. It reminds me a little bit of uh, the last uh, pirate set that we just got. That was the remake. Um, Branch quick. What was that called? Oh, Barracuda Bay. Not Barracuda Bay, but the newest one. Oh, El Dorado. Yes, El Dorado Fortress. That's an Imperial set, bro. Well, in the Pirates universe, but fair. Um, but it's got it's got a very similar kind of look to it, right? Because you do have this raised up base plate. There's this crane piece. Uh, and then there's just these really interesting play features. I mean, again, they're not one to ones at all. So, like, please don't look at it and be like, it looks nothing like the Eldorado Fortress. Uh, the the point I'm getting at is the, it, it feels similar to in design, right? There's some similar play features and similar sort of intent here, right? And so you have like a, a laser to cut into the rocks. You have this this crane to lift the rocks around. This this other sort of gantry dump system that's dumping rocks into like a little cart that's going to move them. And, and then the rock monsters actually attacking them as they're kind of getting set up and, and trying to exploit some of these crystals. So uh, I, I think there's, it's definitely designed to be played with and interacted with more so yeah. than to like look good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, to answer, answer your question here, uh, the, that, cage piece was never reused okay the cockpit piece was never reused and the vehicle frame was reused once interesting only one time in a whole different color obviously it went from dark gray to dark bluish gray yeah. in a construction set in 2005 but it was never used again huh and also the laser pointer thing was obviously unique to rock raiders as well yeah i mean while we're on and the, the subject chrome, what about that chrome piece was also only used in rock raiders what about that large fender piece that kind of goes up and over the wheels in the chrome crusher 
Oh, the is it the the angled piece? You know, I a lot of this a lot of these sets use that like ten by two with the double slided angles that we're talking about or or oh no 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 you're talking about it's like the um, wheel arch piece so the, with the printed um yeah costumes. yeah on the tunnel transport which set was that in so it's on the in the, in chrome, the chrome crusher, crusher. but it also in, in the tunnel transport it's used almost as like a spoiler which i thought is actually kind of a cool use for it it looks like a rear kind of wing a little bit only only in these sets yeah so there was just a lot of pieces then that were unique to rock raiders that were never really right. reused beyond the theme so even even that sloped gray piece i was talking about mm -hmm. uh well just kidding that was used in a lot of sets i was using like 50 sets it's still used today actually that now that i think about it yeah that makes that sense. foot piece the double slope yeah the double slope piece that's got the slope on one side and the slope on the other and is uh, ten long, yeah. Oh, I'm not. I'm not tracking that piece. Um, it's a. Uh, oh it's like yes, two yes, bricks yes, yes. tall. It's got a slope on each side, and it's ten bricks. Uh, ten, ten studs long. Yeah, that's been used in a ton of sets, actually. No, that makes sense. That that one, yeah. Yeah. So, like, but but like you mentioned, right? Like a lot of very unique pieces that have not been reused. This this had to cost Lego a little bit of money to make. And, and design and right. then to kind of never use these again is just kind of a a shame but also interesting so i think we're kind of wrapping up our conversation here uh obviously you know i think we, we talked about all the sets uh and i wanted to just spend a little bit of time on the rock raiders hq yeah again an awesome set it really kind of had everything that you need here it was a great play set like we talked about right and and the whole point of this entire theme was to go out collect that brown rock piece which again was introduced here and we did see reused you know i don't think they still use that piece today uh, but we've seen it quite a few times the the round you know double you know two piece rock piece yeah. was it, from lego so well, we've seen variations right so we got like in the ice theme mm -hmm. we got like an ice like a clear blue a, a transparent one yeah. and then they've done even in the more recent like mission to mars series or life space ones i don't know if this last space wave included it but i think a couple of them ago included it with print. yeah it's actually it's still in production today yeah so they're still using yeah. that piece, which was, I mean, the first time that boulder piece was kind of introduced. In 1999, yeah, with uh, yeah. with this theme. I think they used it in, like, space as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think that was still maybe a year after this. So, you know, there's been some things that have transcended this theme. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's interesting for, like, a, a theme that doesn't seem like much more than to be perfectly blunt nostalgia bait there, there's there's a lot here that kind of lived on with you know just even how you know lego's own system of creating themes right but you know the the, the rock raider hq was the perfect large set in my mind the whole point of this theme was to go use those other vehicles we talked about to go out collect these rocks and then there was just a ton, ton of play features here you load it in you pull it apart, you get the crystal out of it, you dump it off, and oh my gosh, the rock monster's attacking, trying to get the crystal. So it was just it was just a really fun series. I, I think it was well designed, and it's almost a shame that it it didn't do better, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm trying to find it, because you know, we're using the brick set catalog to, to kind of look at these while we're talking. I'm trying to get another image to see if uh, if it's turned if there are any better like play capabilities i guess is what i'm getting at right so like mm -hmm. everything in the hq kind of works for the hq there's a little landing pad for the hover scout there's a little truck that kind of works really well but if i had like the chrome crusher would that integrate well into the hq or is it not built for that and and i asked that question because if it is built for that, I think that's just speaks maybe more to kind of the point that we sort of drove home, which is that this set was really designed to be integrated into 
the larger, right. you know, you were supposed to buy like multiples of these and kind of build them up in that capacity. Um, and I'm not really seeing a good example of that, but um, of it kind of being used. I believe it could connect. Because there was the crane where you could interact with the other sets and yeah. I think that's something that doesn't get a lot of mention when we talk about these Lego themes is like how well does the theme kind of connect with other sets within the theme, right? You know, I'm not I'm not talking about like Ben Kenobi's hut from Lego Star Wars with the clips on the side that has to connect to another set. I'm saying, you know, if I have two sets of the same theme in the same year, like are they automatically sort of cross compatible in that like I'm playing with them together or are they so unique and separated that there's really no cross play functionality between the two of them. All right, Wes. So I think we we've talked about the lore, the characters, kind of what's made this unique, how it's, you know, transcended time and transcended Lego as its own theme, right? And and how one could understand, you know, being a kid from the nineties, there's there's a lot of love here. So as a kid from the nineties yourself, I gotta know. <laughs> what is your favorite set? So I think I would say my favorite set uh, of the theme is probably the tunnel transporter. I, I actually never got that one. Um, mm. And and it's not like I'm sitting here going like, you know, spending every waking minute like, man, I wish I got that set. But what I what I mean by that it's is a, it's OK if you are it's a safe place. <laughs> some Christmas ideas, Grinch. No, uh, teasing. Oh. oh, let me write that down. Um, oh. No, what I what I think are, are you though is is fun is uh, I like just sort of I I thought that one looked really unique, right? It has sort of this like osprey kind of look to it a little bit with its mm -hmm. rotors on the sides, and I, I think that just looks really fun as a theme. You know, well, I guess we'll we'll ask that question later. But Grinch, what what is your favorite set from the way? I uh, I really like the Chrome Crusher. It it came with that unique laser. There's a ton of playability here, right? It had that little like uh, bed on the back that you could pull out and put the rocks in. And for me, it, this is really a theme where they all just play so well together. But yeah. I think what it's coming down to is we did not have the HQ. I believe we had the loader dozer, granite grinder, and chrome crusher. And for that reason, I think of those three, the chrome crusher was my favorite. Mm -hmm. But to your point, you know, the tunnel transport's really cool. Ironically, it has like the worst name. I think the Rock Raiders HQ is also really cool. If I had to pick one, it would probably be that. But like when I think about this theme, for me, like the first thing that pops into my mind is the chrome crusher. Yeah. I I think you know, this is one of those series where I guess so Grinch, what what do you think is like a hit from this series? Chief. Um, no, okay, outside of Chief, obviously I think the whole series is is like this like cult classic of a hit, right? Like they revisited the idea in the future, but it's really kind of like this weird cyberpunk rock rating crew perfect idea of 90s sci-fi right like you think <laughs> of like you know inspiration from the time of like the 80s and 90s sci-fi kind of you know hits and this just fits right into it for yeah. me i don't i don't know why but I, I think the whole thing is is i hate to use that as like a cop out but like I really think it's it's just this cult classic. I mean, every once in a while, at like Lego shows, you'll see somebody that's redone some of these in modern standards, and you're just like, that's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> and so it's it's for me when I think about this, it's almost like it's it's obviously nostalgia, but it's also like a shame. You know, I'm I'm ashamed that that it didn't do as well as it as it it's, as it deserves, right? Because because there's there is a lot of kind of interesting stuff here yeah i i think you know this era of lego 
you saw Lego exploring with this idea. And I don't know what was going on in Denmark at the time culturally, but whether it's power, like Throwbots and Bionicle eventually to, to some of these features, right? You had this kind of this theory of like exploring these new worlds and a lot of connection between Lego and the natural world and exploring that. And so you got this, this mining series and you can kind of see it drawing inspiration from like modern mining a little bit, you know, the cages around the workers, the, some of the tools, but then also just this really fantastical element um, combined. I would agree. I think this, this on its own is kind of a huge hit for Lego. It is, it is a shame that it didn't do as well as it did because seeing future waves of this would be really, really fun. You know, going back to what you were saying with like the whole earth and kind of natural tie in, like we were robbed of, of a lava version of these, of an ice version of yeah, these, like a crystal right? version. A, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was, there was a lot more, I think that they had cooked up in the books and they were able to serve at the dinner table for this one. And, uh, you know, I think that's ultimately why they went ahead and revisited power miners in the future. Right. Yeah. But I, I, I was looking at power miners and I think power miners in its own way was a little bit of a miss too, because of just what, you know, you, everything went to like this olive green color, this, this kind of mm -hmm. booger green and there's these mechs and they've got these like bladed <laughs> arms and stuff. And like I, booger green. <laughs> It, yes i'm sure somebody's out there like i love power miners <laughs> like yeah okay cool well somebody who's 10 years younger than us probably feels the same way we do about rock raiders <laughs> as power miners right that's probably fair and and i you know certainly not here to yuck anybody's yum um i i think that it's it's just one of those things to that like you said just missed opportunities that i'd be excited to see you know, I think one of our, our listeners in, in brick mail a few weeks ago said, Hey, I'd love for them to revisit this series. I, I think they were talking about dino attack. I think that was taco. And that was, that was our boy taco. Yeah. I think seeing Lego revisit older sets, like the galaxy explorer, mm -hmm. like the castle, like, um, the, uh, typhoon, the typhoon. Yeah. Eldorado, or sorry, uh, well, the fortress. That we talked about revisiting the typhoon. You're yeah. talking about Eldorado Fortress, though, yeah. This would be a really interesting series. Or the, or the Blacktron Cruiser. Right. I think this would make a great gift with purchase. Right. Yeah. You know what? As much as I don't like gift with purchases as a concept, this would be a perfect one-off gift with purchase. A, like right. a $20 revisit of the Rock Raiders series in modern LEGO building format. Like, what could you do? I would be really right. excited to see that. I think that would be really fun. That would be interesting. Maybe in uh, 2029. Yeah. For the, uh... Actually, well, this year would be the 25th anniversary, wouldn't it? So. Yeah, 2029 would be well, the 30th anniversary. That's crazy. I don't recall exactly what you said, but now that we've uh, yucked the muck, so to speak, <laughs> uh, let's close the book here on Rock Raiders a uh, beloved theme from our childhood one that yeah. one that not only crawled but like was was uh scooted along and pulled onto the ground and 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 got road rash so that a lot of other other lego themes could uh could sprint looking at you ninjago uh good. however <laughs> that's my job as a audio engineer um as we take you on this journey through rock raiders so <laughs> let's go ahead and wrap up the conversation here and move over to what are we building this week so what are we building west what are you building this week Grinch, i got a big fat goose egg this week for building wow i know you know i'm surprised we're out out of town at a wedding this weekend um, West is West is actually currently missing the vows, so he could be here to record. <laughs> the ceremony so is going on. If you want to, I'm podcasting. If you want to hit, he was the ring bearer, and he's supposed to be bringing the ring right now. So, uh, 
you know, does anybody object? I don't object, but I need about two hours to talk about rock racers. Yep. So yep. if hey you guys, guys don't mind, time out. let's take a knee. Um, so I can go string and... quartet. <laughs> phenomenal job. I think that's a good practice run. Let's do the real thing for the real ceremony here. Huh? No. Uh, so we've been busy this week. Um, with stuff going on at home, uh, stuff going on just, you know, so what you're saying is, is you have a life? <laughs> no, huh. uh, never. Oh. oh, okay. Good. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> Lego is, <laughs> <laughs> I asked you if you had a life and you went, no, <laughs> it's like, like off the cuff, uh... like that was not planned. And like your, your instant take was no, I don't. <laughs> okay. Well, no, what I meant some real little brother energy there um for the listeners what i LBE. what i meant to say is is imply is that building lego doesn't mean you don't have a life obviously we have i mean look at this <sighs> wonderful community we've put together um that we built huh got him <laughs> um no, dude, things have just been busy so i i haven't had a t time to sit down and build anything um i actually don't we have some backlog that's that we're still unpacking, um, but we mm. need to kind of put together a space where we can build stuff. I think Mrs. West really wants to tackle the Home Alone house next. Um, I have a, a Speed Champion set that I'd like to put together, so I won't spoil what I'm building next week, maybe for the next few weeks, but uh, mm -hmm. in terms of saying it early before we actually do it. But yeah, so we, we've got some stuff. I think... Right now, there isn't really anything on the market where I'm like, oh, I need to get that. I, I, I know I need to get the um, Natural History Museum. Must be nice. But I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant with, with some more pending moves coming up on uh, whether I want to leave that one unopened or, or build that. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But that's, that's kind of what's going on. I don't know. I might, I might dabble a little bit more with Stud.io in terms of what I'm building this week. Yeah. I might play around with that. I have some schemes I'm thinking on. So I won't I won't share them too, too much know. until uh till already. N nothing ideas worthy, just uh modifications that I want to make to sets. Oh. I know Grinch, you're rolling your eyes. Oh. Um but you know without having my my build table and my extra pieces and everything kind of in front of me, Stud.io is the next best uh best building environment so so since i have to bring the lbe little brother energy <laughs> um west imagine it's the 1500s okay and you're in italia italy okay and this man named leonardo uh -huh. last name da vinci uh -huh. rolls into your crib and he's like yeah west with the with a th with the dollar sign as an s why do you do that man you're like i'm american you'll get it one day and he's like i just painted this painting of this of this woman i want you to know what you think and you're like okay let's go check it out and he's like i call her the mona lisa and you're like you know i would buy it but um the smile is all wrong she really needs and then you go and modify it to like, yeah, yeah, you know, you go, you know, have you seen the movie Smile? Because this could be way creepier. And you're like, Bam. that's what your modifying of Lego sets is doing. So I think, you know, first you're giving Lego a lot of credit because you're assuming that the final built product that they have is equivalent uh, to the Mona Lisa. But um, excuse me, they've literally made the Mona Lisa, <laughs> so they're literally transcending art, to use that word another time, Eric, start the counter. <laughs> Fair. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I don't have much, much more to say on that. I, you're, you're, at, you're, at a, you're at a loss for words. Well, okay, so my specific thought Can't process, keep up with the little brother energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna defend my, my, thought real quick and then okay. I'll get to what you're building this week. Um, my thought process, right, is like the Natural History Museum for Lego is really fun, but it would be really cool to make some more curated exhibits that you could like swap in. So like the dinosaur build is great, right? But like maybe I want to have like 
lean in on the space stuff, right? So we do have a little bit of a space exhibit, but wouldn't it be fun it to have- It be a natural history museum. It'd be a space museum. God. Well, okay, fine. Maybe I'm going to turn my natural history museum into a Lego air and space museum. Like, <laughs> why, don't, why don't you just make it air and space museum? Well, there you go. I, I mean, you can do that. I, I think there's just some fun stuff for, you know, waste modifications. I've been, um, I had the theme or a scheme of that when they created that Lego Amelia Earhart gift with purchase of like, oh, this mm -hmm. would be really cool to feature in like a museum, but it's such a big setup itself. It's too big. To build a building yeah. around that would be crazy, right? But you could still get the minifigure, which actually is not a very complicated minifigure and then build a very small replica of a red plane. Sure. And that could be a stand-in, you know, design or, or uh, exhibit in the museum, for example. I just think it'd be fun to find- Just out of curiosity, yeah. you have that Amelia Earhart tribute set, I right? I do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did build it though, so I don't have it in the box. I, I did, did put it together. I have the Jane Goodall one that I saved. I did not build that one, so. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, that one was fun. That one always breaks when I move. It breaks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No. Anyways, they're fun sets. I, I think it would just be fun to kind of find more ways to to build that out a little bit more, explore mm -hmm. some of those those features, and you know, yeah, I, maybe it's just something where like every once in a while you just change the exhibits in the museum or something like that. Like nothing, yeah. nothing drastically changed. The one thing I will say, sorry, now that we're on the topic, you've got me going, Grinch. Uh, and then we'll get to what you're building. I really Mrs. like Gabrin. the removable wall piece on the museum where you lift it up and then you have access to like the bathroom in the back. I'm trying to remember. I actually need to build mine. Um, so the, on the first I'm floor, remember, like, 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 like on uh, the Sanctum Tectorum where you can like pull that part of the wall. Yeah. Right. And, and why yeah. I think that's really nice is if you go to like, other Lego modulars from back in the day, they leave like open space. So a good example of this is the police headquarters and they leave open space when you take the floors apart so that like, if you were actually in the building, there would be an opening between the wall. So you would hear and see what was going on on the other side of it. So between like the donut mm -hmm. shop and the police station, there's an opening between the two of them. That's so they can pass donuts over in my lore. What's that? That's in my lore in my Lego city. That's so that they can pass. They can donuts throw donuts over, over to the police, police officers. Free. Just yeah, big donuts, pretty corrupt in this universe. So <laughs> that's fair. Um, <laughs> I, I think they actually did that so you could get your hands in there, right? And so yeah, I think that makes sense from that perspective. But I I like this now this kind of new idea that we're seeing in modulars of like let's just. You know, the new Ninjago city did that too, where they like the side just came off and you could access mm -hmm. it and do what you wanted. And then you kind of reattached it. And I, I think that's the, you actually pull out the entire room. Yeah. I think that's a really slick idea. And yeah. I, I think that's kind of not only the future of the modular series, but I I'd like to do that to things like the police station, like complete those walls and then just get it so you can build them and pull them out. Um, which again are modifications, but I, I think a good modification versus a, a bad one. So just my thought. Sure. Anyways, sorry, sure. tangent over. Grinch, what are you building this week? Committing a cardinal sin of Lego building over here at <laughs> West. Um, I'm just kidding. Teach their own. That's what makes this hobby special. I built the piranha plant from Mario, which is, we talked about this episode where like Lego's not coming out with like a ton of smaller sets and like mm -hmm. that's perfect set to me like they could have they could have made that thing two to three times bigger and charged like two hundred dollars for it and i'm really glad they didn't because like the forty dollar just small piranha plant set was it just an excellent build you know mm -hmm. did it in like an hour uh really looks like just clean and simple on display very easy to display because it's not humongous yeah. right I, I forget who we were talking to about somebody regretting buying a Lego set or actually, actually I think it's coming up on brick mail with spoiler alert, but they talk about the Titanic and like how they're like, I got the Titanic and then like, Oh shit, where do I put this thing? You know, it's just so big. So, <laughs> you know, they could have, they could have 
made it two hundred dollars, quadrupled the piece count, and they did it. So I'm very happy with that restraint from Lego. The other thing I'm continuing to work on is Bardadour. I've also feel like I just have. I'm working on my Lego room. You know, if if when we're recording, you know, a couple days ago, I published the third update of my display area. So uh, last night I actually took all that Lego that was sitting around on top of stuff. And I got it for the most part in its final home and set up. So making a ton of progress there. Um, I do feel like I have a little bit of just like task paralysis almost with my Lego room because there's, and, and it's not that I'm not doing anything with it. It's just like, like I worked for like three or four hours on it last night after, after I was done with work and I'm just like, did I, do anything yeah because i don't feel like i'm making any progress but it's just a big the thing is is normally it doesn't take me this long to get everything like on the shelf but what really is is throwing the wrench into the plans is it normally it's like two weeks yeah the problem here is i've had to totally redesign my space and my room and i also my last move i didn't do some of those things so you know redesigning the shelves like when I made the custom shelves, that literally was three weekends because I had to, like, one weekend cut everything because making, taking four by eight sheets of plywood and cutting it down to, to specific measurement, I mean, that takes, a, you know, a few hours itself. Then getting it down, you know, down in my basement and actually making the dang shelf. And then, you know, the next weekend I painted them. And then the next weekend I fixed a couple issues that I had with the legs on them so that they would stand better. And then it's like, okay, I can finally put, oh, wait, I got to put the lighting on it. So there was three weekends gone just to get those five <laughs> shelves done. So hopefully, you know, my next move, like, it's just going to be move the shelves, plug them in, you know, that'll take a weekend. And then the next two weekends, get the Lego out, get it on display, and it'll go a lot quicker. So, yeah. uh, but, you know, in this case, it's, I, I, you know, like you said, we both don't have lives, or I should rather, I should say, we both do have lives. So when you dedicate three weekends a row into just a hundred percent Lego and have a family, you know, that, that feels difficult and you're trying to do a podcast on top of it. So, yeah. uh, hopefully next move, everything will be a little bit more situated and easier to just like time to just pull this out and put it on the shelf and get that done in a couple weekends versus having to do it over four weekends. Cause you know, by the way, you also move houses. So you have to like set up the rest of your house so yes um, which for us is what is uh really difficult right now with a small child is building out the rest of our right. house so that we then have time to build lego <laughs> so uh luckily when i move my company takes care of me and they actually unpack all your boxes for you and just leave the crap on in the room that you want like you still have to put it away yeah our, but that literally saves you like two weekends we we can do that too we're just when we moved not to like you're just on move you're just on move one wait till you're on move four well, exactly and your tune and will totally change we're, we're <laughs> streamlining right now right we're realizing like what what was smart to move what wasn't smart to move what what maybe when grinch yapped at me for two hours about his three previous moves maybe he was coming from a place of logic and reason and not dissent <laughs> No, yes, absolutely. You, Grinch, you definitely have more experience with that than I do uh, recently. I think it's it's just a case of of realizing like maybe this needs to go into storage, right? I mean, I I I'm not gonna say famously because that, that's not the case. I decided to store all of my Lego minus like Fam famously. Famously, I remember decided, the Twitter outcry. Yeah, 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 it was actually widely uh, published. Um, <laughs> I think Elon Musk said, like... He did tweet, and he goes, wow, I'm, West. I'm not even that dumb. <laughs> Sorry, we're not fans of Elon or, Musk. Just like, or BDE there. If, if, or, if, 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 you're, if, you're, if you're a fanboy of Elon Musk, just do yourself a favor and look up how good of a person he actually is and, like, get over the fandom. That's all I'll say. Yeah, I think you should choose better role models. That's what I'll say. Um, no, I, I, I stored my stuff, and I... Uh, you know, it, it is disappointing, but it took a lot of time to pack up the Lego and it, it would take a lot of time to unpack the Lego and we're, we're looking mm -hmm. at moving again in nine months. I don't know what else, you know, I'd, I'd have to, by the time I got everything unpacked, I'd have to repack it again. So 
Yeah. It's just, it's a lot. I hear you. And so, you know, kudos to getting kind of the system in place to make things a little bit easier. I, I think for me, one of the things that's really helped is actually just putting stuff into storage and kind of being like, look, I, I plan on using this in the future, you know, the, yeah. but I, a, I don't want to risk things breaking in the move, which Grinch, I know you famously, you famously, uh, just moved the Lego yourself with the help I of remember, the trailer. I remember the tweet. Um, you know, I, and that was not necessarily something that we had the ability to do. And so, uh, we took a different direction there. It's a lot, dude. It's a lot. So, you know, you know. Yeah. So I, I think for me, it, it's a hard pill to swallow, but my collection is what? Four times bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for me, it's like more of, I'm going to be probably where I'm at for like two years ish. Yeah. And so I, I will invest the time in getting it all out to inventory it. Right. And that's how I treat it as more of an upkeep of a collection. Yeah. And so like when I am in that final spot, we're, we're all good to go. But this has been a robust, what are we building this week? Yeah. Grinch, uh, from so, rants about Elon Musk to actual uh, Lego To moving. Sites. Grinch, so you built the Piranha Plant. Highly recommend. Yes. Yay or nay? Five out of five. Nice. <laughs> Even if you're not like a Super Mario fan, um, and just kind of are okay with the IP. It's, it's a good, it's a good set. Nice, it's a good build. It's very different uh, from what they back on the done rails. In the past. So let's go ahead and <laughs> get back on the rails and move over to the brick mails. <laughs> brick mail. Stop. All right, so we had uh, two pieces of brick mail uh, this week, and uh, that's Big Brother Energy BBE over there. Um, do you want to take the first one or the second one? Uh, I'll take the first one real quick. Uh, we got an email, a very nice email from a listener named Zach. And uh, I'll summarize kind of just his main point here. And he said, I just wanted to reach out and say thank you for the podcast. Uh, I've also, I've always wanted to listen to some sort of Lego podcast. It's just nice to listen to other people talk about things I enjoy. Uh, and he said, uh, it's, it's hard to find podcasts that I enjoy, but he really enjoys you know listening to this and and the community that we've created um or, or i wouldn't even say created right we've we've just set the foundation for because you guys are part of this community too our listeners and we really appreciate that uh and zach we really appreciate the 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 email you know it, it's nice to hear that that grinch and i our conversations are are enjoyable to listen to because we enjoy talking about this this stuff and and yeah sometimes it does lead on to tangents and uh, rabbit holes yeah, that obsessions. we we have to pull ourselves out of but but we enjoy that and we enjoy kind of where these these conversations go and and, and to your point exactly right like when we started this we were looking to create the, a, a place to have this adult conversation that wasn't just a Lego review by an adult fan of Legos or a, um, you know, a, a, a curated experience designed to, to really grow and, and promote an audience from a perspective of, of, of trying to, you know, either maintain a, a fan base so that, because that's your job or, you know, this is just a fun conversation is really what I'm getting at. And we said, let's record mm -hmm. this and, and make this a thing. And so we're really happy that, that you're enjoying this, Zach. And, and please, any other feedback that you have, let us know. Um, as to any of the fans or fans, listeners, um, <laughs> fans of the show, if, if you guys have any ideas for things that you'd like us to talk about, you're like, hey, I'd love to hear you guys chat on this, this subject. Like, please give us that type of feedback. We'd love to, to kind of use that as, as inspiration mm -hmm. for new episodes. And, and we'll we'll shout you out and say, hey, this was, for example, uh, well, I mean, we did that with the fake Lego episode where we we did have some requests to discuss that, and and we highlighted that those requests, and and then kind of built and an episode around it. The more requests we'll get, like we have a schedule actually, spoiler alert, built out through the end of the year, so plenty of content to come. But if we start to get four or five requests or multiple requests about the same topic, you know, we'll, Hey, let's, we'll add it to the list. But if we get multiple requests, we'll start pushing it up the list of like, Hey, a lot of people want this. So, you know, yeah, you only sell what you try to sell. You only get what you ask for. Right. So, 
uh, love the feedback on that. Yeah, thank you, Zach. And I did want to say really quickly, Zach did mention at the top of his email, I did respond to you already, Zach, so check your email if you haven't. But he said, sorry if this is a bit odd, but I couldn't find your socials. Um, thanks for the free plug, Zach. Uh, you can email us at afalswelcome at gmail.com or uh, we're on Instagram yep. only. And we've, we've um, recently so... revamped the Instagram page. So take a look for that. We've included a link in bio section um, where you can see if there's any references from past shows. We've also highlighted creators that we really enjoy. Um, and so we actually have them linked in our links. Um, we're not getting any sort of like affiliated kickbacks or anything with that system. It's just a way for us to share kind of more details about our episodes and mm -hmm. uh, us with everybody else. So um, we, we've kind of professionalized our Instagram page a little bit more here. So um, yeah, anyways, that's that's the case. Uh, we definitely don't use X. So sorry, Zach, not, not a huge X fan, but for I think obvious reasons at this point. Yeah. I just, I honestly, like, I don't use a ton of social media in general. So whenever I have to do, like, social media stuff for this, it's kind of like, like, I don't personally have an Instagram. <laughs> I don't personally have a Twitter. I, like, the only thing I really use is Reddit just for productivity so that I can work a nine to five, do a Lego podcast, build Lego and spend time with my family. I try to avoid social media as much as possible. So, uh, but you found the podcast, so. The next uh, piece of brick mail is, I will just say your first name for privacy sake, because I think Google automatically plugged it in, uh, maybe unbeknownst to you. So uh, Rob uh, wrote in and he said, hey guys, uh, first of all, I'm enjoying the podcast more and more every week. Thank you. I hope we're getting better and better every week as we literally just started this endeavor at the beginning of the year. So hopefully we're, you know, Every once in a while, there might be a little bit of a road bump. bump. I'm thinking of the uh, how to display collection when I was on vacation and didn't have my normal recording set up, and you can just hear 50 billion clicks. Uh, but glad to hear you know you're enjoying it more every week. I think we're getting better every week, which is which is important as well. Yep. Uh, I get the vibe that I'm hanging out with you guys and just talking about Lego. Just that my job is to listen. I have three younger brothers and can see having similar discussions with them. So West is my older brother. So younger brothers unite. Um, but yeah, I think you know that's the largest endorsement I think that we could ask for. To be honest, because that's really the goal and the mission. Like like West was talking about uh, with with Zach's reply. A few comments on recent episodes. He's got four comments here. I'm going to just take one of them, talk about one of them, take the second one, talk about the second one, and so on. So uh, number one, uh, Lego knockoffs. I really wanted a Lego nativity set, which, of course, is not made by Lego. I found one on Amazon made by Nativity Bricks, so why not? Uh, this set was fine. I knew I would not get a regular minifigures except, but the set fits nicely in our house at Christmas time. There's a place for brick sets that Lego will never make, as you guys stated. And, yeah, I mean, that's like exactly what I was trying to convey is like Lego will not, you know, has said they're not going to do like religious based sets. So uh, they've also said they're not going to do military based sets. So like, that's fair game. I think what West and I were also trying to convey is like when you see a modular building, and then you see a knockoff brand to a modular building, that feels a little bit copy pasta, right? You know, like somebody's just like, you know, hey, copy my homework, but make it obvious you didn't cheat. So they're not knocking it off, but they're kind of knocking off the, the idea and the concept. And uh, that's where it feels a little bit out of place. So I think the idea of a nativity set is a perfect example of where like somebody else can step in and give you that experience through a construction toy without copying Lego. You know, alternatively too, you could make one yourself with something off of Stud.io or Bricklink or, um, you know, building one with yeah, the spare pieces. Buy the pieces yeah. and build one. Yeah. So if that's something yeah. that you're really looking to achieve, and you're really committed to using Lego branded pieces, uh, you know, and at this point there's enough animals that Lego's reintroduced recently mm -hmm. that I think you could actually get yourself pretty, pretty close to that and, and put a fun little Lego twist on it. Uh, yeah. a little Lego, uh, <laughs> figure as like a little Lego baby Jesus would be pretty funny. I was trying to think was Vitruvius from the Lego movie too. It's kind of like Lego Jesus, but uh, I, I digress. Um, <clears throat> number two, buyer's remorse, Titanic, Titanic, Titanic. I bought the set at the local Lego store. I'm fortunate to have one five minutes away from my house. On the first day it went on sale. The staff had printed up white star line boarding passes and gave them out while we were standing in line. I love that. Yeah. When I remember 
That's when I got the cool. Rivendell set, I went and waited in line, and there was like 20 people in line. I was like, oh my god, I'm not going to get one. And I went like 30 minutes early. And then they came, I was like, uh, do I have to just mad dash to the register to go get one and then like do the rest of my shopping? But what they ended up doing was just handing out a piece of paper to everybody in line that wanted the Rivendell set so that you could shop and enjoy your experience. And, you know, we have 52 sets, we have 52 pieces of paper, whoever gets one's getting a set and they went down the line. So I like the idea of doing the boarding passes. That's, that's very clever. I, I would have asked to keep the boarding pass too. It's just like a fun token. Um, the unopened set is still sitting in my storage room pouch. <laughs> Once I got home, I felt like it wasn't going to be a lot of fun to build. And even worse, I had no place to display it. Well, if you're not going to display it, my recommendation is just hold on to it and then like sell it in 10 years for, you know, like two grand or however expensive that set will get because somebody will enjoy it. But um, yeah, that you know, that's part of the reason like I just totally avoided like the Eiffel Tower because there's a ton of pieces in it, right? Was it 10,000 pieces? Yeah, big. Um, but like, it's it's got to be, I mean, it can only be so interesting to build 10,000 pieces, right? <laughs> like at that point, it's like I'm building a freaking house. So, you know, so, yeah. I, I, the Titanic was an interesting one that I thought of for Lego in that like I understand there's a lot of excitement around the set, the 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 subject matter, right? But like, I don't know. Is it like a little morbid having that like sitting on your desk, you know, as like a model? And it splits apart. <laughs> I, I, Is that terrible <laughs> that I like it literally splits into three sections? <laughs> Which I get from like, that's intended to be a building. But my first reaction was like, ooh, too soon? Like, are we really going to just, are we going to split this thing apart? Yeah. Huh? Like, I don't know what other. The sound brick? You know, Lego is, is exploring building kind of ships, right? We're supposed to get the mm -hmm. endurance this uh, endurance this winter. Um, I don't know what other ships that they would really want to build like in that scale that would be famous. So I, I understand sort of the yeah. complexity here or, or maybe the problem, if you will, of like famous ships. But yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, it would be. It's just I don't know. It's interesting. Don't get me wrong. The Titanic was a gorgeous boat. Like, what a stunner! And and I think the Lego set looks wonderful too. So I right. I get that. But yeah, I hear you. Hear you, Rob. I think that it's uh, one that you put together, and then you know, as we've mentioned on this podcast before, it's a it's a dust collector a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. So. Next point here, back to Rob's emails. Predictions for 2025. I just wanted to add a comment about DC sets. I'm a lifelong DC fan, and I grew up reading Superman comics. The DC universe is so much more, in all caps, than Batman. I did see that Superman Lex Luthor set is going to be released next year. Where's the Daily Planet? Where's the Justice League headquarters? Where are Teen Titans? I feel like LEGO is missing so many opportunities with their obsession with Batman. And, yeah, I think it, part of it is because, like, back in the day... It wasn't Lego DC, it was Lego Batman and Lego mm -hmm. Spider-Man. And then they started, you know, going into, like, when the MCU got bigger yeah. and the DC, um, you know, um, Cinematic Universe, whatever it's called these days, was, 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 you know, getting bigger. They started focusing more on the movie set. So it was kind of a chicken and the egg situation where, where Batman was the egg. And then I think it's just kind of like what they fall back on without any new movie releases that, that they anticipate doing well, unfortunately, unfortunately. Well, and, and you know, Batman uh, but it is, it is a good call out though. Batman has been the crux of the DC cinematic universe. And so mm -hmm. I, I think it, like you said, because we've sort of transitioned into that as sort of what is the genesis for future sets, we're right. not seeing anything else because DC isn't really putting anything else out there. I, I hear you that there's certainly potential to go back into the comics and revisit things, right? But like the Sanctum Sanctorum was in the MCU and, and featured in the movies. The Yeah, but the Daily Bugle was not. Neither is the X-Mansion. No, and the Daily Bugle in the way it was done is, is really more of a comics thing. And I, I, the X-Mansion was featured in the movies, though. You know what I mean? So like I, I think there's justification. I, I hear you. I, I don't know. I think DC is just struggling right now in general. 
And I, I guess yeah. we're seeing that in Lego too. So I want, it makes you wonder, again, I talked about it last week of like with the Batmobile, I'm like, you know, this will sell and it's going to tell Lego we can make more of these. And it's like, is it only selling because it's the only DC thing that comes out or is it because people actually want more Batmobiles? Mm -hmm. I wonder, again, going back to maybe sales information, maybe the Batmobiles are the only thing that do sell. And when you get something different and unique to the line, it, it hasn't sold historically. I don't know. We don't, we don't really have that information, but that's just kind of where my mind goes. So it's, wrapping yeah. up Rob's email, he says, number four, Lego ideas. Great job reviewing the 34 sets. You keep kept it interesting and fun. My favorite is the post office. And I'm sad that Lego automatically eliminates the modular buildings. We don't get enough of them. And I do want to say for the record, they don't automatically do it, but they did recently announce with the BrickLink designer program that they will no longer accept submissions and they've historically never done a modular type building in Lego ideas. So the closest thing would be the old fishing store and that didn't have like connection points. It wasn't called the modular old fishing store. It was, it was fairly unique. The only thing that we really had is similar to a modular is that it was built on a uh, base plate. Right. And then he says, uh, great, uh, keep up the great, uh, the good work. Uh, so thank you, Rob. Uh, appreciate it. Glad you liked the Lego ideas. Uh, I know Wes and I were talking about that one before. I'm like, this is going to be a long episode. So, um, it was a very long episode, but you know, I'm glad to hear that people are really, really enjoying it. So, and that is a wrap of another episode of A Falls Welcome. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you are listening to this show. If you'd like to reach the show, please reach out to us at afallswelcome at gmail.com or follow us on Instagram at afallswelcome. Thanks for listening, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye.